Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. Uh, welcome to the channel. We're going to do a video for you on virtual work uh, beams, okay? And we're going to use the virtual work method not to solve for deflection or for uh, rotation, uh, which is what virtual work for determinate beams is usually used for, but we're going to use virtual work to solve for I. And we're going to solve for the, mo the smallest moment of inertia required for the beam shown so that its max deflection doesn't exceed the limit of L over 360 of the span length. All right, cool. So what is the virtual uh, work method? Essentially, um, it's derived, it's a work energy method. It's similar to like Castellanos theorem, and they equate the external work to the internal work. And um, from that, they arrive at this formula. So unit deflection is equal to L0 MVM over EI dx. Okay? So this is the virtual work formula for deflection. Okay. And this is a determinant method. So if we count our beam, we have three reactions and three equations, so we're good. If it's not, we need to use another uh, method, but for now we can use this, so we're good. Okay, cool. So how do we find uh, the smallest moment of inertia required for the beam so that its max deflection doesn't exceed the limit? Okay, so in, in this case, we're given the deflection limit, which is this, and we can find MV and M, and we need to solve for I in this case, okay? So um, what is the how do we use the virtual work method? Pretty simple. Uh, it's similar to Castellanos theorem or method of least work, where we're going to take we're going to derive the equations for m uh, of the real beam, so the the beam with the external loading, and we're going to do it for if there's multiple sections like in this beam, we're going to do a, b, and b, c, and then for m, v, uh, we're going to apply a point load to the beam, and we're going to do the same thing, uh, and that point load is going to be one kilonewton, and it's going to be on the point where we want to find the deflection. And here, um, notice in this question, this is a very common kind of exam trick, is that they ask for the max deflection, okay, but they don't tell you where they want you to find the deflection, okay? So when you apply your point load, you want to apply it to the point on this beam where we're going to get the max deflection, which is actually point C, right? Because if we apply a point load on the end of the cantilever, that'll give us the maximum deflection at point C. So let's start by doing the real, the real beam, okay, which is going to be our M variable in the equation, okay? And we're just going to rewrite the beam, okay? We're going to draw the 300 moment, okay? And we're going to draw our 60 kilonewton, okay? So first we just rewrite the beam with the original loadings on it, and we're going to choose an origin when we, when we formulate our, um, our moment equation. So you should be familiar with this. If you're not, go back, uh, check out our equations, uh, how to solve for the equations of the beam videos. What we need to do, okay, is we need to go ahead and we need to solve for uh, our moment expressions. And in this beam, you'll see that we have two sections, okay, because we have this loading in the middle kind of separating both of them. So we need to find an expression for AB, and we need to find an expression for BC. So if we go ahead to the C section and we cut it, um, we go to C over here as our origin, okay, and then we cut just before B, and we look at it from there, and then we cut just before A and look at it from there, we don't, we never have to look at this kind of reaction here. This reaction is always out of the, our, our moment expression, which is good for us because it's going to save us some time. So first we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the beam. Uh, we're, we're going to start from C as our origin. We're going to cut the beam and we're going to analyze it from just this portion here. So I'll just redraw that. Okay. So we have 60, we have a variable distance X and we have a moment here M. Okay. Pretty simple. And we just take the moment about this point here. Okay. And that has to be equal to zero, so we have negative m, okay? And then we have this negative 60 times our variable distance x, okay? So we get that m is just simply negative 60, and this is for section CB for the real loading, okay? So that's CB. Now let's come over here. Let's do section BA, okay? So if we do section BA, um, like this is kind of the tricky part in the test, okay? It's because you need to kind of select the origin and, and you need to, you know, um, it, it can be hard to, to know where to select the origin. In this one, if we start from where we were before, which is C, okay? We can uh, take the, we can cut just before A, okay? We'll take this whole section and then we can just change the limits. So uh, let's try that. So we're going to cut the beam just before A, okay? So we have point B and point C. We have 60 kilonewton, okay, and we have 300. All right, and we still have our variable distance x. We cut the beam here, and we have our moment. Perfect. Now uh, we have to solve for our m again, right? So counterclockwise is positive. This is equal to zero. So we have uh, our, again our negative m. We have our negative 300, okay, and we have our 60 times our variable distance x. 
So we have m equals negative 300 minus 60x. Okay, and that is section BA. And at section BA, if we change our limits, okay, if we change our limits here from 5 to 10, because C is our origin, okay, so if we want section BA here, okay, we want to change our, our limits from 5 to 10, essentially. Okay, cool, so that's the real beam, and we'll get back to this in a second. Okay, so these are our M expressions for uh, section CB and section BA for now. Um, now let's go in over to the virtual system. Okay, so the virtual system, okay, our virtual system, what we're going to do, uh, we want to find the max deflection, so it's going to be at point C. So all we do is we simply just come over here and we apply, we take off the, uh, the superimposed loads, and we apply a 1 kilonewton virtual load. Okay, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to cut it just before A. Okay, we're going to take C as our origin. Make sure the origins are the same. Okay, for, for like if you took the origin C here for B, CB, you need to take it from C here for CB for both systems, real and virtual. Now we're just gonna, simply going to go ahead and we have our M. Let's find the moment, okay? So we're going to find the moment. And for both sections, okay, it's going to be the same. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for BA. We're just going to change the limits. So as you can see, we just have negative m minus 1 times x, because this is our variable distance x. That's equal to 0. m is equal to negative x. Okay, And it's going to be the same thing for uh, section uh, CB. So that this was section CB. Okay, here. So we cut it here. And then this is going to be section BA, where we cut it over here. It's exactly the same thing, except we're just going to change the limits. Now, what I like to do from this point is I like to go ahead and make a table. Okay, so I like to make a table here, and uh, you know, this question's pretty easy, you don't necessarily need a table for this one, but um, it is good to have. So our segments, we have uh, CB, okay, as we spoke about, and we have BA, okay? So the origin for both of them is just going to be C, okay, because we started from C for both C and CB and BA. Our limits, okay, for CB, as we talked about, we started from C, we cut before B, so that's going to be from 0 to 5, okay, 0 to 5 meters. And from BA, we're going to take it from 5 meters to 10 meters, okay? So that's what I meant by changing the limits. Now, for M, let's take a look at what our M was for our CB segment for the real beam, okay? So CB was simply negative 60x, sorry, it should have been an x there. So that is going to be negative 60x, okay? And now it's just a matter of really filling stuff in here, okay? So negative 300 minus 60x for uh, BA was, was our moment expression that we found, 60x. For MV, okay, for our virtual system, we come down here and we found that they were both negative x, but we just changed the limits for uh, VA. Okay, now what we need to do is just use this formula and we need to plug in. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and this is sigma actually. So let's go ahead and we'll compute the, uh, the deflection for both. So we're going to move the, um, so we have 1 over EI, we're going to move that out. And we have L, so our limit and for our CB is from 0 to 5, okay? And that's going to be MV times M. So we have MV, okay, times M, which is negative 60, times X. And that's DX, okay? And then we have plus from 5 to 10 is our next limits. And we have, uh, again, for, for BA now, it's going to be negative x, and then we have negative 300 minus 60x, bx. And now we do have E, okay, our E is 200 GPA, and this is equal to deflection. Now the deflection limit, remember, the max deflection was L over 360, right? So that's our L here is 10 meters. So we're going to do it in terms of, we're going to do 10 over 360. So we'll find the deflection limit in meters. And that's going to simply give us 0 0.20277. And this is equal to this entire term. And so I suggest uh, learning how to put that into your ca calculator using the definite integral sign. I'm not going to solve that because the video would be too long. Um, but what you will get from this, okay, and try it on your own. Once you integrate this entire expression, is you're going to get 3... 31,250 over 200 times 10 to the 6 times i. Okay, so make sure that your units are correct. Now in this equation here, all we need to do is we need to solve for i. 
and this I will give us the smallest uh, moment of inertia required for the beam shown so that its max deflection doesn't exceed the limit. And I, as you can see, if you solve for that, will simply be uh, 5625 times 10 to the 6 millimeters fourth. Don't forget your units. Okay, cool. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, it got a little bit messy in the middle there, but uh, that's why I kind of try and do simple problems, but we do tricks because it, it becomes kind of hard to write them out. But uh, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and thanks again for watching.